Hello everybody, welcome back to Farming Simulator 22. I'm back on Castle now for the second episode in the Let's Play series. Right, so I've done quite a lot in the background. I tried to give myself a bit of a head start because we've started off with a lot of fields that have been ready to harvest. Two big potato fields. We also did the sorghum in the last episodes. There's grass that we need to mow. We need planting the alfalfa and there was a lot of prep work that I needed to do really just to try and give myself a bit of a fighting chance within the episodes to get, you know, ahead and uh, yeah, hopefully get a good precision farming score, get the feed we need so we can get the animals. So, I'll give you a bit of a rundown of what I've actually got through. Um, I have done quite a bit, which is great news, obviously. So, precision farm is probably the best way to start this. So, in field 29, we uh, harvested the sorghum, did some bales, only got about five straw bales from it. I then started mulching it. Um, that's how I ended the episode. So, since that point, I've, I've limed this field, so the pH is spot on in this one. pH this field as well, so 24, 28, the one we're going to be doing alfalfa in. I've also leased out the... Um, potato harvester that we're going to be using in this episode and I made a start I thought two big fields is, is way too much to do in an episode so I've done field 23 I've also mulched it and I've put lime down so I've actually done really good we spent quite a bit of money though because the harvester itself was 30 grand to lease out because it's we went for the best we can get uh, but we'll see that in action later on in the episode um, and I also bought a field because I decided that our grass field here this field 97 it would make sense if we buy this little plot, plot of land here. And it was only 60 odd thousand pound. And the good thing about this, it's got trees on. So we can make a bit of money. We can chop these trees down, make a bit of money, because obviously logging is, is decent income and they are good trees. If I just quickly jump over to the first vehicle right at the front of the farm, you can see they're not bad and they still have time to grow. And if we just have a quick look at them, it is a pine tree. So these definitely need to grow. So we're not gonna be chopping them down yet, but when we do, I don't know what we could, we could actually place down something in this area. I don't think I'm going to turn it into a, into like the, the grass. I'm not going to extend it out. I'm actually going to use this as a place to put something down. It could be an extra storage shed. It could be a place for us to store kind of root crops and stuff like that. Because obviously in the last episode, I was saying that I don't think I've got any good spot for that at the moment. Um, so yeah, I mean, we can just make the most of it, I guess. Uh, but I am absolutely loving this farm. Loving it. It's a... Uh, proper good to play on and that tractor is cool really cool that actually brings me to a point that i was trying something out and i think the best way to to showcase this is with this tractor so let's just start this up and uh, we'll go for a bit of a drive so currently compared to the deutzfahr this tractor hasn't got that kind of realistic reduced engine brake force so we were talking about the transmission in the last episode of that Deutsch Fahr, how it you know you can just go up to five miles an hour and it'll coast for quite some time now this isn't that bad now i am using the mod reduced engine braking force but even with that mod it's still you know it's still not as good as that Deutsch Fahr. so i was thinking about something i'm using the uh, vehicle control add-on i'm using it for the gps i've actually talked about it in i think a, uh, one of my contractor episodes how I prefer that for the GPS. And I was having a little mess around whilst I was doing some, obviously, harvesting with the other potato harvest that we're gonna be using. And I saw an option, so if we just bring it up, I'll show you, and I think it's a way of doing it in other vehicles, which is this, which is low brake force. So, aka rolling resistance. Now this is really cool. I've actually changed this to 20, but if we reduced it down to, let's say, 10, which I think is probably too much, and we'll go to 10 miles an hour. You can see that this is now rolling. So it just points out that if anyone actually likes the idea of that Deutz Fahr and wants to put it on another tractor, then you can actually do that. Now I'm probably going to keep it around 20%, I'd say. Or 15. Let's try 15, but I think that's that's probably okay. I mean, you've got to remember if there's something on the back of heavy trail, it's gonna, you know, push, it's gonna push it quite a bit, so. You don't want it to be too much, but I, I found that 20% was better. I mean, that starts off at around, I think it's 100. I think it does start off at 100. And this is obviously the vehicle control add-on mod. You'd have to download it. I'm using control C, and so left control and C to bring up this menu. Um, use, I use this to kind of like adjust my snap angles to like 1% because I like to be precise on where I'm aiming at in a field when I'm trying to do my rows. Um, and also de detect width, which is the main reason I open this up. So I saw this. Also, you've got throttle limiter, 
permanent keep speed. There's a lot of things that I haven't actually gone into on this mod. Traction control, manual, all-wheel drive, differentials, all that kind of stuff. I haven't gone into it all, uh, but it does offer a lot. So if you're interested in that idea from the Deutzfahr, then this mod, yeah, can offer it. I will point out, though, if you do change this, it's vehicle, it's, it's set per vehicle. Now, I think there could be a way of setting it to all vehicles, but I'm just doing it to each individual vehicle. So this now, for example, it's got low brake force of 15%. If I went into, let's say, this tractor and opened up this menu, it'll be set to default. So you can see that it's 100. So you do have to change it to each vehicle. But when you do, it will save um, It will save that will. So it's like, if I go back to this one now, it knows it 15%. So I just wanted to point that out because, I, yeah, I'm playing about with it just to see if we can, you know, find another just see if we can improve it mainly right so before we get into this field and crack on with the potato harvesting I have noticed as well there's a few bumps here don't know if I've smoothed it out enough I'm hoping it's not too bad but I did want my bunkers to be quite level uh, but yeah it's you can tell that it's just a few few bumps coming into the to this bunker this side the other side's okay it's just this side I don't know if I want to probably smooth that out. I might have a look at that, just see if I can make it a little bit better. Maybe just raise this up here a touch and then have it dipping down. I think that might be just make it a bit more smooth of an incline coming up to this would be better. But I'll, I'll, I'll mess about with that in between this episode and the next one. So, potatoes from that first field then that we did, we've got 111,000. And I've stuck them in the bunker because, you know, it's a good place to store them. We can actually cover them and they won't ferment it's just a storage point and i think for the meantime this is our best option but we need to get out on that field it's going to be a big job luckily we are going to be using kind of like a, a gps version not actual guidance steering mod but vca I'm just hoping it's not going to take, you know, a long time to get this field done. I do it. I did enjoy it last time. I had some music on, and uh, like I said, I, I believe this this game is proper therapy. <laughs> uh, but yeah, this is a task and a half, really. This field is a mammoth size. Now there is up there a few trees, and I've taken out some of the smaller ones, just deleted them off. So have a look over here you can see like this tree for example I've deleted them out up there and I've kept some of the bigger ones we're going to chop them down and we're going to make it so next time we plant into this field that that shouldn't be an issue we can actually um, yeah hopefully we can uh, make it all one now one thing I will give a shout out to the creators of this map is they've made it so the power lines in the middle of the field and if I can just show them quickly you can just see there's some power lines sticking through the fields. They are there. We'll go past them, but they, are, they haven't actually got collisions on, which is a nice touch because we don't have to worry about adjusting. And with this thing being the size it is, you know, this is already a mammoth task. It really is. So I think what we'll do is we'll, we'll just go up and down. We'll go up and down. I imagine this is going to be crazy. <laughs> the yield isn't the best but it's still good enough that it's going to be a lot of potatoes and i don't know we'll, we'll keep putting some into the bunker but i think we're going to have to sell some at some point definitely because it's uh, yeah it's a lot i mean it's going to come in handy for the feed definitely because i mean we've got the capacity we've got for animal feed alone is it's crazy if we get the amount of animals we can hold you know, we're, we're talking millions and millions of litres a year. So this isn't a bad thing to start off with. It's just a task. I mean, look at the size field it is. Many up and down rows needed for this. Um, ideally, I'd want to start myself on a nice straight. What I'm probably going to do is I'm going to just do all the way up to the top and then at the top of the field I'm going to go across a few times just to make my turning a little bit easier come back down again do that down this side it's a little bit more difficult because of that turning point there and then yeah we're just going to have to go up and down aren't we up and down all the way I mean it's, it's a nice shaped field for a potato harvest 
you know, it's straight, it's long. Um, there's a good turn on that side of the field. There is a small point at the corner just there that's not as good, but it's this side that I'm worried about. I mean, we're already 25% full. <laughs> this is going to be a big job. I am tempted to just sell. Maybe take three loads, maybe two, two loads of the trailer because it's a big trailer. Um, and then just go sell the rest just to try and bring my money back up. I think that should be enough potatoes for the meantime. I mean, we're not going to use that many. Oh, I forgot that that's got no collisions on. I didn't really need to move then. So you can see there's just that little point there to the field that makes it, yeah, a bit of a challenge, but not too bad. I mean, we could technically, if we own that patch there, we could take this tree out and extend it out. But I kind of like having a nice runoff. It just makes my life easier when it comes to obviously driving you know, driving through the field. I'm just trying to think now if I just decide how far I want to go. Like we could just take it to this point. And then we'll make sure we clear everything to the left-hand side now of this line that we're doing. And then we'll go back down again and make a bit of a nice edge on that side. And I think then it should be a straightforward job until we get to this part in the middle where we're going to have to go around. But it is just set your GPS, do your up and downs. Might be a good point for a time lapse then and then, you know, I can stick some tunes on. Definitely. I have done a lot when it comes to precision farming in these fields as well. I will talk about that in a second. I think I missed that out. Um, let me just quickly show you that now. So, you can see that up at the top here, we just got a warning for maybe how full the tank is, I guess, maybe. Uh, yeah, so 18, I've put lime down, and 19, because we've got two crops in there growing. We've got the canola and we've got the soybeans, I think that is. Or no, no, sorry, that's the barley, soybeans, canola. So it's the, the canola and the barley is growing because it's kind of like a winter crop on this map, the way it's set up. Yeah, you can see the growing the growing stages a lot earlier. I mean, the soybeans is ready, technically. Very close. In a few months or maybe the next month, that'll be ready to harvest. I mean, that's the one thing that I'd say this whole harvest and map is lacking. It's nitrogen. I mean, it'd be a perfect time to stick some slurry down, manure down, but we haven't really got any. Yeah, because of the fact we're lacking in animals. Same for this grass field. But I think this isn't a problem. We can just basically plant in alfalfa, put some nitrogen down, pH is fine, then it's job done. Weeding, we're just going to go in there with the, with the sprayer, turn it on for a second, give ourselves a decent score there. Um, same goes for the grass field. As soon as we've mowed it, we can then do work in it. We can obviously put nitrogen down and we can put the, the lime down for the pH value. And then it's, it's same again with this. It's just about putting nitrogen as we plant because obviously everything's going to have a different level. Um, it's just this whole field. It's a, it's a, it's a mess, really, isn't it? It's just it's such a shame. Now, I know I can get nitrogen into 18 and 20, so we can sort that out. It's just field 19, just like 17 and this one, where we're going to struggle. So let's crack on. Turn around. We shouldn't do any crop damage in this field, luckily. It's that one over there that we would do crop damage into the soybeans that's ready. But the barley... And this field over here, we've put lime down, so we have to wait for the next growth stage. But we can get straight into it. And, uh, yeah, we can improve that nitrogen value. Right, so what I'll do now is I'll do a bit of a jump cut before we get into a time lapse. I'll make sure this edge is kind of, like, sorted out. And then we'll go down to the bottom. I'll do that edge down there. So we've pretty much just made a life easier, and we can do some up and down passes. Um, yeah, I'm... Honestly, expecting a big harvest from this. We've already picked up a lot of potatoes, over 100,000 litres of potatoes. So, yeah, I'm expecting around 300,000, if I was going to guess. I think this is double the size of that one. Right, welcome back. I have done a decent chunk of this field, I'll be honest. I did, obviously, the, this pot, patch at the top. And I did a really big patch at the bottom just to make my life easy when it comes to turn. You can see that my main aim was this point here when I get to the end. I didn't want to 
have a you know a tricky time turning there. So I did a good chunk of this field at the bottom, and I've got a hell of a lot, as you can imagine, of potatoes. So this trailer right at the bottom that you can see now, that is the second full load. It's full and he's dropping off, and I've also just filled up pretty much the truck over there. So that's going to be everything I keep. So it'll be technically three loads that we dumped extra into the pit. Um, yeah, it's a, it's a lot. Now what I'm going to quickly try and do is just use the, the Giants version of uh, a worker by just turning that on. So I'm hoping that's done it now and we can just hopefully jump into this and the truck up there. Just want to make sure they turn but we'll see what happens. I'm hoping they detect the fact that Obviously, I've done quite a bit of it already, and they don't need to worry about turning too much. Um, I mean, we could just wait and see, really. I, I don't... I, I imagine... I mean, I don't use it enough. I only use really course play. I did at the start when the game first came out. Um, but, yeah, it seems like that's done the job. Happy days. So, yeah, let's go dump this. It's another 32,000 litres. God almighty, we've got plenty of potatoes. I'm hoping when we... I'm hoping now, though, everything that comes out of that harvester that we sell is still good money. Um, it's probably not the best time to sell, but we haven't really got anywhere else to store it apart from here, and I don't want to go and pick it up for a, you know, a second time into these trailers. I'd rather just get rid of the olive trees. Made it difficult seeing where I was going, them. There we go. Probably easier to actually use the, the truck on this one with the reversing, but... Ah, it's all right. Done the job. Yeah, look at it. We're over 150,000 litres of potatoes for feed. That is more than enough, really. Let's be honest. If we can just make it a bit right out the back end. There we go. Because then we can do the other side with the, with the truck. Right, there we go. That's that bit done. So we can bring that back to the field. We'll get in the truck. We'll bring that down tip that and then everything else after that point we are selling now we're gonna have to find a sell point and all that hopefully it's not too far away but we'll go for the best price because i think we're already going to take a hit on it so the last thing i want to do is make it even worse we, could, we might be able to just make this full because this is only at 97 i know it's not too much of a difference but we may as well see if we can get See if we can get the extra 3% in here. Look at that for a view. Stunning fields to work in. We have to reverse this, aren't we? <laughs> I don't think I've ever reversed an emptied uh, harvester. There we go, we're at full. <laughs> full. That was quick anyway. Yeah, we'll get them trees out as well. I think there's four trees there to make a bit of money on. They're not the easiest to chop up as well hoping to make some good cash from that though so let's go tip this last load 30,000 litres we'll have a look then quickly just to see where the best sell point is uh, we are trying to miss the rain I'm actually doing this episode in the same in-game day as the last episode or well, the first episode technically um, but yeah I just I just thought why not try and get it all done I mean it is September so We'll have longer days. 175,000 litres. We're going to be 200,000. 200,000 litres of potatoes in here. That's a lot when really we're only going to be putting about maximum of like 10, 20% in into a feed mix. Yeah, this isn't going to back up very well, is it? We can try, but I just don't think it's going to back up too well on this one. Getting a bit of a nudge here. There we go. Just want to try and get it in that corner. There, that's where we want it. Ooh, it might like stay up there, not at all. <laughs> My god, I don't think I've ever put this many potatoes before in a bunker. But it's doing the job. It's doing the job. There we go. Right, so we may as well now cover this up. We'll let that do its thing. We'll just quickly cover this up. We've got 205,000, and there you go. So it's not about fermenting, as you can see. The bunker sale is covered. Bunker sale is done fermenting. It's not about that. We just—it's just storage. It's literally just storage. But you can cover it up, take some out, and cover it up again, which I do like that feature. It's pretty cool. 
Right, so let's get back out to the field and we'll have a quick sneak peek to see where yeah, the best place to sell is and then I don't want to get too close to that turning just in case they're going to turn in our direction but now let's turn the engine off save a bit of fuel and we'll have a quick look now to see where we're going to be taking these bloody potatoes because we've got potatoes galore let's try and make some money off them um, probably the best thing to do is this because we've got 205,000 that's the best place which is technically like co-op that's how I see that three it's uh, 291 best price is 377 um, bloody hell it's good money in it potatoes I mean this is on normal difficulty 205,000 77 grand it's good money it is because you get so much for the field I know it's a lot of work but I've always stood by potatoes and sugar beets uh, if you put the work in you'll, t you'll take home a, a shed ton of cash it kind of rewards you for all that work because of the the, vol the sheer volume of the root crop you get. It's interesting as well when we get the, the premium edition. It's not the platinum yet. It's the premium edition that's coming out with all the root crops there. I'm really actually looking forward to that with, with the, the beets, the red beets and the carrots and the parsnips and the, some decent machinery in that. And, and I mean like there's loads of additional machinery. It's not just for the root crops. It's got like a, their own Fiat Agri version, uh, tractor. There's, there is a, a lot of kit in that and I'm actually looking forward to that. And I will be doing a let's play on that map straight away because I, I just want to get hands on with the kind of root crops and, and just see what they've done. Um, I'm actually looking forward to uh, take my hat off for Giants for that because they've they've uh, made a, something that I'm actually pretty excited about playing on. Right, so stop faffing about. Let's have a look at sell points. Just go do it like this uh, just because it probably makes more sense. I'm sure like there. There we go. So there's only actually two sell points. There's obviously the base game map, which is another French map, which I, so I understand that. I think that if we have a look, it's actually like a train line um, or or you can do it in the boat. So it actually is like simulating that you're sending it out. So you can see there's a train line there that's highlighted. I'm sure. Yeah, you've also got this. I don't know if that's the train because I know there's a, I'm sure there's a ferry. You can see that that's a ferry going across. So it's naval export. But yeah. I mean, it actually interested us how do we get it to here, to there? Because obviously it's going. I imagine the train line is probably the best place to take it to then. Because that's on the on the river, or do we put it? I think maybe then actually naval export. Let's just visit this and have a quick gander at this then, because this is a. Uh, what's this do? Nothing. Imagine we're probably gonna have to. S Yeah, this is a, this is a strange one. So there you go. You got some root cops in there. Looks like sugar beets. So we can, and then it goes on to the barge. It looks like to me. This is interesting, definitely. So, how do you get set up with this then? We we'll just tip it in. All right. Let's have a look at actually what's here. Just first off, so we've got the naval export and rent a train. So that's what we want to do. We want to rent the train, don't we? Now, I think that would have been this. So, five leasing leasing cost. So, technically, we rented a train there, which is, I hope, not too much money. And then we've got these tip points and that tip point there. And that looks like it's returning something. So, it looks like we can pick something up from that. And I imagine... Let's see if we can, if there is a train. Can we get into it? Doesn't look like it. Right, well, that's a, yeah, I think we basically need to just tip it in to get it to go if we were going to use that. But I think actually the best sell point isn't there, but I'm sure at some point we're going to need to use this. But we've rented a train, so you think I could actually jump into the train? Right, so I've just jumped in the air and I've tried to learn a little bit more about this because I'm not used to having a train line, but I like the idea of it and I would like to, you know, if it is a good place to sell at any point, we, we want to be able to yeah, jump on and use it. Now, from what I understand, we can go over to here and if, on the F1 menu, we can rent it for £1,000 or euros, whatever, an hour and it'll tell you the distance as well so it's on its way from that point i'm just trying to figure out where we go because usually like i'm thinking of mapper italia here 
It gives you somewhere to tip this into. And we obviously got that kind of ferry system, but then we just got a train line. And my thing is, does it just go to the edge of the map and then you sell it to, well, obviously, help, uh, help bail on, um, if I'm pronouncing that right. I'm hoping I am. And then this one, is this again, like you, because I know it says you can rent a train here, but it's only £500 an hour, which is interesting. I, mean, I guess it's kind of slower to get set up. And then if we do it, it says that it's going to arrive soon. It's 1.8 kilometers away. Uh, but we'll return it because then it's not obviously going to charge as much money. Um, and then I imagine it just goes outside here. We tip it into that side of there and it just tips it in and it does its thing and goes off. So that's like a cheaper solution. That's my guess. So what I'm thinking of doing is I'll save a trail at the end. I want to find out how, how that works. Definitely. Now, we need to go and empty this and then we're going to go to the other cell point. So let's just quickly do that. I know I'm in flight mode, which is not ideal. Um, so let me just sort that out. There we go. Let's get this guy going again. I will carry on with this as soon as I figured everything out. <laughs> I love this map. I have to say it is a cracking map, and the guys that made it should be really proud of themselves because it's uh, stunning, stunning, and it obviously offers a lot as well. And I love the uh, the additions that it's put in, like alfalfa, and I mean that that's that view that that just wins it for me. But there's loads of things. There's loads of things to this map. Even the the base game farms that you can start with are really good. Um, and the nuts. I mean, I haven't tried them. Don't know anything about them, but you know, there's a lot going on there, and I think it adds in additional uh, production features as well, which is nice. And I don't know why I got rid of my hood though. That's uh, interesting. There we go. That's bad. So let's just turn that off, leave it going. Um, I'm hoping it doesn't have an issue with the trees, so we should get back into it before that point. Um, but what I want to do is I want to actually have a look at the sell point we're going to sell this, the majority of this at, which is clearly this one, which is 291. And so let's tag the place and have a quick look on the map where she is. Hopefully it's not a million... I say that. It's right up there. That is That is a million miles away. So, from what I can tell, just trying to think of the best route for this, because we don't want to be going through that village, that's a certainty. I'd say the best route is over the bridge, maybe up the road, and over there. I mean, is that off the map? Like, can we still drive there? I mean, I doubt we can. Yeah, I don't think that's... Uh, I think it's just kind of like nicely blended, the map, the PDA is. Um, right, so, yeah, I'm, I'm going to say the main road, turn right all the way up to the top, cut across this, follow this kind of main track till it gets to the dirt track, and then cut across. Ideally, you'd want to stick to it, so we'd have to have a look at that track. Let's go and have a, a bit of a recon mission just to see where that is. Come on. There we go. So we want to go down this road, which is such a nice road anyway. That is a trek and off. That is, really is a trek. And then we're going to go up here, follow that road, which isn't too bad at all. But then instead of going all the way down there, we could go up this. Now, that does look like a bit of a hilly climb. I don't know if we should be doing that. I will be honest. That looks a bit crazy. Is that the actual sell point? Oh, yeah. There you go. Potatoes. So we're going to tip it here, I imagine. Um, I mean, there is this route, which is probably better suited, which is across the bridge. So let's just have a look at that now, where we are. Yeah, so we could just come down here, but then it's where do we go there? I mean, that might make more sense, actually. So let's carry on following this. Because we're there. That's our farm. Don't think that doesn't. That's nowhere. I mean, bloody hell, this map is stunning. It really is stunning. I'm getting sidetracked now. Yeah, we don't want to go that way, do we? Even though that would be a nice little track, wouldn't it? Can we, can we do that, though? This one. 
I mean, technically we could. That's not too bad. It's a bit of a climb. But we could do that all the way down. But if we don't do that... <laughs> see, there's so many routes to this, my brain's just shutting down. <laughs> um, bridge down here, right down, main road. I mean, you could just do that, couldn't we? We could. I'm going to have to do this as an auto drive because I haven't actually got auto drive set up. I know, I do know the auto drive guy's probably got one set up for this. And I think that might be a good idea to do because I think it just automatically tell me the best route. The one thing I want to avoid is going through that. That would be a nightmare. So I think the, the you know, at the bare minimum, we need to take this main road and then work that way, like that. I think that's probably the best bet. Main road, because this is too difficult, I think, for the the equipment we've got going through this part. I mean, you're probably all right to this point, but then, like, look how tight this is. You know, you wouldn't want to be doing that in a big truck or a, a big tractor with a trailer. So, ideally, that's a no-go. But I do like the idea of the bridge, and to get to the bridge, we obviously need to go cross there down this way we can then get onto the main road take it all the way down get back onto this part of the main road and then just follow it like that around or we do the challenging bit which is pretty cool and we get this track here that comes off the side of this massive cliff this this cliff edge and just go up through the trees i mean it does look like an option it does i mean that is a track though isn't it I'm going to try it. I'm going to try that. I think that might be pretty cool. Right, so anyway, let's um, get back onto the harvest. I don't know if he's... Yeah, he is. He's uh, stopped again. All full up, which is fine. Let's go sort that out. Bloody hell. This, I'm, I mean, I've been playing for an hour and 25 minutes, and we've still got a lot of this field to do. I mean, I just spent about 15 minutes faffing about trying to figure things out, but I actually like the look of that. I mean, it's challenging itself. Is he just stopped for no reason or? Okay, that makes absolutely no sense to me, but fair play, fair play. Right, so let's see if we've got one from this point and we'll start going. There we go. So let's turn off again flight mode. We didn't need that. We definitely don't need this anymore we'll get on with this field. I might do a bit of a time lapse now. We'll get enough to do the full two trailers full. And then what I'll do is I'll come back, cut back in, probably set the the work going again. Hopefully it'll work a bit better. And uh, yeah, we'll make our way up that cliff all the way over to that south point. Try and sort out a bit of an auto drive network to get there. So if we do it again, we can just set it going automatically. I think that's probably the best bet.
welcome back. Um, I did cut off the time lapse at the end because it was taking forever for me to sort a route out. Now, I just want to point out this auto drive route that I've just done now, it is literally just to sell this green. I will get definitely onto the auto drive guys route because I can tell you now from experience, it's going to be spot on. And it saves me a hell of a lot of time because that trip alone was, it was a challenge. And we, even with my most powerful tractor, it was, yeah, it was, there was times when I was getting down to like five miles an hour. Oh God, it was a nightmare really. Um, so we're going to try it out. Now the sell point, it's one of them ones where I have to back up myself because I just, yeah, it's got conveyor belts and stuff like that. Now I like that, I do, but it just means we can't just do this automatically. We're just going to have to go and tell it to sell. Um, I think we should just drive really to, we'll go to this. Have a look at this now. I think it should just take the route perfectly from this point. Uh, we do need to set our cornering speed down just a little bit, just because I, some of them corners are crazy. Now I have turned traffic off as well, but it should get there and then hopefully sell if this is, you know, worked out all right. Um, we might have this one that's 82. Let's see if we can just fill this up a little bit more. I mean, as long as we got one on the way, that's the main thing. I mean, it doesn't have to be straight after it. We do need a bit of a gap anyway, because we've got to give it time to tip. And the conveyor belt, it's not instant. It literally can only take so much, so as you tip in, you know, its capacity is, is a lot lower. Um, but yeah, I mean, I've also noticed as well, one thing that's crazy is my money is leaking. And I mean leaking away, and I figured out what it was, and I think leaking is the right word for it because let me show you this this is something i'm gonna have to sort out um, i found this as well on a few maps now um bally spring was one right, let's go to money where where's money gone there we go this one so if we have a look at september now i know september is technically just the one day but look at the water costs Thirteen thousand. i mean what is this water made out of is it holy water or something that is crazy Thirteen thousand pound now wage payment 1200 don't mind that that makes sense. All this miscellaneous is from when we're building the farm. Um, but you can see that, yeah, leasing costs, that's... Uh, I'm just trying to think. Oh, I know what that is. That's when I was building the farm, I was leasing out equipment um, to set up and stuff. Um, some of the ones I was trialing out, so we returned that anyway. Property maintenance, don't mind about that. That's that's kind of like a normal amount. Running costs is normal. Land purchase is fine, and construction costs obviously fine as well. Um, new vehicles, again, we spent a hell of a lot on vehicles. But that... That's crazy. So we're going to counteract that. I'm going to find a way of counteracting that with a source of income that's not going to cost me just because water water costs. It's insane. What kind of water bill is it? <laughs> I mean, are we bottling water up and selling it? Because that's to be the only way that would make sense to me. That's uh, pretty insane. So, yeah, we'll fix that. We'll definitely fix that. I'm just trying to think, should I just send this now? 82%. The other trailer's not got much capacity and I don't want to kind of drive through the crop. So we'll have to wait till it gets to the end and turns around and fill this up and then send it. Uh, but I, I can talk you through the route that it's taking. Let's just see if it, how it's getting on. Not too bad, not too bad. So let's talk about the route. We'll go to the map and then I'll, I'll talk you through what I'm actually doing here. So we've come... This is the field here. We're coming down this route here, taking the main road across that little bridge back up the main road here we get to this point we turn right and follow it up this is all uphill it's a uphill battle <laughs> get to this put junction here we turn left we carry on up across the bridge we get over this way to the cell point swings around comes back on itself goes back across the bridge we get to this dirt track junction here we turn left carry on we take this first right now this at this point is a nightmare and it's all off road and it's just all downhill so it's i mean i just had my brake on the whole time and the, if, if i was really driving that in real life I, I think i would have maybe got a concussion or something because it was just bang 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 it was bouncing all all over the shop really but it comes down here second right all the way back down this hill which is fun to drive i'd love to get like an off-road track like some kind of off-road vehicle and just do that for a bit of fun in game. But then we get here, take the bridge back up and then back into field 17. So it's not a bad loop. Now I, I chose this way on the way back because it's quicker, but also we're coming downhill. Uphill, that would have been a struggle. But then again, this route itself, uphill, is a struggle. 
it's you know in this in all fairness to this vehicle it is doing all right 20 miles an hour dropping a bit now but yeah it's it, i have to say though the map is stunning like one thing i've noticed driving all this route it's stunning you know nothing feels the same it, it was, it's all unique it feels real because of that it's yeah it's stunning it really is now it has auto generated a bit of a, a route like i said so i've got double over like on top of each other but we're going to sort that out we'll fix that because i'm just going to get rid of this whole route and we're going to go with the auto drive guys route because yeah it'll be spot on and all sell points i might have to adjust some of the bits on the farm because obviously we've done you know a custom farm build so it's going to have like a loop through them fields that we've built in so i might have to remove all that and then if i do put anything in place on the farm i'll have to do that myself which is not a problem at all that's not a problem but yeah i mean it'll help us with these sell points definitely because you know they'll be set up properly right so let's have we've probably missed i hope we haven't missed the guy oh man we nearly have as well i hope it just stays there come on tractor come on this this now this deutsch boy is going to struggle with this trailer this is a, a more a bigger capacity trailer so we might have to swap this one if he just stays there we can empty just stay sorry there you go you recognize what we were doing eventually yeah this is over 40,000 I think the other one was up 30 something so we might have to put the the John Deere on this because 45,000 is hefty I mean at the end of the day yeah look at it it's struggling even in reverse but yeah at the end of the day this is a big load it's a big load for any tractor going uphill is going to be a battle so let's just get rid of these let's just put them to the side I mean they're, they're, they're a good idea but I just need something better to tip into to be honest that's that's the main problem with it was the tipping from like my trailer I mean if I had something that was easy to tip into to start with or even just a, like a, a wheel loader here for me then yeah I think that would work much better so I'm hoping now with the trigger being in there all we need to do really is just reverse back into here there's a, it's a big it's a massive shed so it's not going to be an issue for me when it comes to the height of the trailer lifting up and yeah there you go so I might prefer that I mean like I said I, I love that idea I need something at the bottom to collect the potatoes better to send them onto the conveyor belt um, but now as well there's no capacity problems with the conveyor belt we can just sell and gain money so not bad at all right so what i'll do is i'll get this done i'll get all these potatoes sold we're going to be on a conveyor belt kind of thing of you know a vehicle going back to the farm another vehicle coming up i hope i don't meet anything on the on the way because there is parts where it's just single track it's a bit of a nightmare not gonna lie this is logistically a nightmare I think I need George on the job with his technical decision making because yeah I'm struggling with this so far it isn't easy but we'll get it I'll get it done I'll get everything sold and then yeah we can get on to uh, doing a bit of a recap at the end and at least we've got all them potatoes for our feed <laughs> right welcome back we got there we got there in the end we've done probably four trips in total <laughs> it's, it's crazy this track is yeah we've done four trips in total we've sold all the potatoes that we intended to sell <laughs> can you imagine how, how how sick this would make you feel it's just it's just bumps after bumps man i mean to be honest, right, it's probably better going uphill. <laughs> It'd be a bit calmer. Come on, break. Whoa. I mean, we're getting there, though. <laughs> like I said, we're getting there. We've got one vehicle on its way back after this, which is the, the main truck, um, which is actually the best one for this job. It just needs a big capacity. But, yeah, it's, it's the best one because it goes at the, the best speeds. And I think, yeah, it just flies through. It flies through and... I don't know I mean it was interesting doing that that way but we sold it that's the main thing got there in the end that 
Potatoes are a big job, just like sugar beets. I think sugar beets are overall probably a little bit easier than potatoes. But we're doing all right. We've got back up to 130,000. Um, been robbed. Been robbed. Basically, the water bills. They're just crazy. It is crazy because look how much water there is around here. Just be able to pump from the river. It's mental. So we're going to fix that. We're going to fix that. I also think I should get a good chunk of money back when I return the harvester because I'm using the mod where it basically you pay a deposit, uh, which is kind of like that initial fee for leasing out equipment. If you take, if you return the vehicle basically back without any damage and stuff like that, then you get your deposit back. And I think if you do do a bit of damage or wear, then they take some of the cost back to repair the vehicle off that deposit. £11,980 back in return and I think it's taken a good chunk off that because yeah it's probably picked up quite a bit of damage really or wear probably is more likely than, yeah wear more likely because of the, f the fact we've done two fields with it and this field was massive but we did pick up a good yield let's actually look on precision farming to see if it says exactly what we've picked up from there yield wise um, where the hell are we there we go so if we pick up that now we can see that we've got 250,000 litres from that field alone and then 100 from that so that's 300,000 375 th about 370,000 I'd say in total of potatoes and we've kept well just over 200,000 so yeah we've done well the money's shot back up at least I mean I did start at 250 but we have bought that plot of land where the trees are which was 60 odd thousand um and we've obviously leased out some equipment and yeah, done a bit of extra stuff. So yeah, not too bad. But the main thing is we've now got... Turn the, the beacons off. We've now got a good chunk of feed in here. 205,000 of potatoes. We've got some sorghum, if we ever need that for the pigs. And we're getting there. Slowly but surely we're getting there. But that was probably the biggest job out the way. I don't know if I'll need to do a harvest like that again for potatoes. We could just buy in. Um, I guess it depends, really. So let's have a quick look at this. Um, now, they will make 600 and something odd pound a month. These make 8,000. So really, we could put a few of these just lying around and give ourselves, what, 93 and a half? Uh, I'm just trying to think. That's like 9,000. It's 18,000. It's a bit too much, isn't it? What about... Let's have a look at these. So, I mean, we could just put a few of these popping around the place and make it up to the 13 mark if we say that that's how much is that that's 13 that's 13,000 a small wind turbine I mean that's that's not a bad option is it really yeah. do you know what I'll do that because I expect the, the milk the thing is we haven't even got any animals and we're getting charged that much for water so what we could do is just put this like in between like maybe this woodland area just pop it down somewhere I mean, at the end of the day, as long as it's generating us money, it doesn't matter. It's, it just needs to counteract it. I just don't want it to look too ugly, really. You know, so we can't put it anywhere in the main part of the farm, but we do own this section here, so we could technically just like plonk it down somewhere over here. It's out the way. <sighs> Done a bit of terraforming though, hasn't it? So let's try and smooth that out. I think that's not too bad, you know. And we can see it in the distance over there. And it's not too bad, is it? It's not like it's a massive one that looks out of place. You know, it does the job. And it, it means we're not going to get conned anymore by the water company. Because we're selling them some wind power energy in return for them not, you know, giving us such a high water bill. And obviously, as we get more animals grow out, I imagine... We'll pay a nominal amount, maybe 4000 3000 and that's not too bad. But that, that'll just tie us over for a bit. And if they, you know, if they start charging us more, we'll just keep putting more of them down. Because, I, mean, I don't know about you guys, but water bills could not be that much for a farm. No way in hell. Maybe a couple thousand pounds a month, don't get me wrong. They're a lot more than, you know, your normal domestic house. But no chance in hell is any farm spending 13000 a month on water. And if they are... That's insane. And I will, uh, yeah. I'll be like, fair play. Fair play. 
Right, so on that note, I am going to leave the video there. It's been a long one. I think I've been playing for, let me just have a check, three hours. Two hours and 57 minutes to be exact. That's how big it is to do two big potato fields. You've got to remember, I've only done one in this episode. But obviously, I have set up a bit of an auto drive route going up and down. That took some time itself. Uh, but I think we've done well. 143,000 in the bank account. We've got a lot of feed. We're, we're doing well. You know, we, as soon as we do the grass and... I think we can start, you know, I think then we can start getting some animals in because at least we can give them grass silage. Um, and hopefully soon we'll get some hay as well because I think they'll need that. So thanks for watching. I really do appreciate it. Hopefully you've enjoyed it. If you have, give the video a thumbs up because that does help me out and the channel. And if you're new, don't forget to hit that subscribe button for more videos just like this one on Farming Simulator.